Welcome to Curious Chimps Podcast. I'm your co-host, Nathaniel Pearl. And I'm Sam Sheva. And welcome. We here at Curious Chimps are law-abiding citizens. We do not endorse anything illegal. And anything we discuss is for entertainment and not information purposes. We are not experts, and nor do we claim to be. So please, consult the doctors, do your research, read the label, and for the love of all that is holy, be safe. All right, let's talk about drugs. Curious, curious, curious chips. I like how when you buy weed in Montreal, they call it a set for seven grams. The store calls it that? No, I, oh, I don't. I doubt okay. it. But like you know, before it was legal, back in the day. Yeah. yeah. It, during prohibition. <laughs> Allegedly purchasing. <laughs> no, I bought that shit. <laughs> Come after me, bro. <laughs> I just like it. Like people were like, "Why do you call it a set?" And I'm like. I just, like, I thought about it for 10 seconds, and I, it was, like, some friend from Calgary asked me or something, and I was like, oh, shit. Why do we call it a set? Because it's seven in French. A set. Mind blown. Is yeah. that really the reason? Yeah. That's fucked. I never knew that. It has to be. Set. It makes sense. Like, an ounce, they called, like, the slang was an O. Yeah. I guess that's efficient. Ounce is, like, one syllable anyway. You can just say <laughs> ounce. <laughs> an O. <laughs> but a set. set. One yeah. set. That's so funny. There's no cool number for 14. There's no cool name you for 14. Dolls. They would just yeah, they would just say 14. Get a 14s. A cat would be cool. But if you had an S at the, the end of it, a 14s. 14. Yeah, that's no that is that's ex- that's exactly it. Yeah. A 14. Someone will say that. 14s. Yeah. That's so funny. What do you say for like a 21? They just <laughs> just fucking tw- 21s. <laughs> <laughs> Almost an O. <laughs> an AO. What's an O? It's 28? I thought so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, I brother. Don't know. Math conversions what's up man nothing at all <laughs> like, that's perfect uh, yeah well you know you know something interesting happened to me yesterday i mean well interesting it's debatable but i meditated in the morning and i haven't in a while and i sat down for 20 minutes i tried to go deep i just like really centered myself whatever you want to call it meditation practice it just and i'm also bringing it back to like a, a simple mindfulness technique not really like a profound theta brainwave meditation like i'm just focusing on my breath or something trying to bring it back to basics because i lost my practice a lot lately Mm. and uh i don't know i guess i'm i'm realizing that two things one this is actually really big but i'm just going to gloss over it i my practice has been so on and off and i realized that anyone in my immediate circle i'm doing a huge disservice to like the name of yoga in their minds because they think i'm practicing yoga and they see me still like just wigged out about like life things and Mm. and i realized that like it's a it's like a facade i didn't even realize i was putting on you know so i'm i'm genuinely fucking that up for people who might have been like oh yoga's cool look how much better sammy's doing and it's mm. like nope <laughs> and they they think i'm practicing though and i have to yeah. be like no i'm actually but i i have like a tendency to be humble i tell people i suck at music and they're always like bro you're amazing i saw you play guitar blah, blah, blah. Yeah. and it's like i'm not like there's there's people who actually know what they're doing like i just i just have like you gotta tricks. cut that crap <laughs> but, I, but I, it's 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 just basic it's not even humility it's just like I know, okay, look, there's this thing called the Dunning-Kruger effect. And, and it just means that the dumber you are, the more you think you're good at stuff because you don't know better. Hmm. Well, dumber, I don't know. Dumb is kind of like a mean way of saying it. But the, the more informed you get about a topic, the more you realize you don't know anything. Yeah. So there's, a rever- there's an inverse relation on how confident you feel about something as you get better at it. So I'm like an intermediate. Like I can play a lot of instruments. I don't know scales. If you tell me, okay, we're an A minor, like I, gotta th- I-, I just got to hear what you're playing. It's all by ear and it's all uh, wishy-washy. Nice. I didn't put the time in same thing with yoga. But like, let's say if there's a band playing or something, can you just jump in and you'll be good? N- yes and no okay like not clean like that i went on i went to a jam like a public jam at a venue it was really fun with a friend oh. of mine and wow. th- these these guys were speaking a language that i just didn't know my friend put it that way he's like you're not sp- you don't speak the language of music yet mm. you're like a toddler like you can put a lot of ideas together and you have your own way but like it's like it's like a second language like you if i say you know like like i said like if we're, we're playing in c mm. I, I don't know where that is i mean like i i can kind of figure it out i i have a little bit of experience but 
I can't just be like, okay, like that scale and then yeah. know how to move that scale so that I can keep soloing like when the guy changes chords or something. Like, okay. I can't do that. I have to, it all has to be by ear. So if, a, as your, as your example, like if I'm jamming with people, I can't really hear myself hmm. perfectly, especially because my ears are like not great anymore. And I, I, it's harder even then to find it. It's almost like I have to stop everyone and be like, oh, okay. Like that's what that sounds like. And then, you know, it's, it's, it's clunky. It's anyway. always amazed me that I had a friend, he passed away a long time ago, but he was such a good musician. Like he would just jam on the, on, I used to make music, you know, about that years ago, I had a whole studio and everything. Like Fruity Loop style. Like you made yeah. music on a. Well, I had a, I had a whole studio computer. at some point. I had a workstation keyboard. I was using Reason. Okay. Uh, Cubase. And then I had a mixer. I had a, like a bunch of shit and just like buying sounds and creating <clears throat> this whole fucking thing. And. I would just I would create the song. It was a hip, mostly hip hop instrumentals, and my buddy is like nice. a fucking master of the piano. And he came over and I showed him a song. He's like, "Oh, so you did this?" He just played the first thing I added, mm. and he literally broke down my song in two minutes. The whole, all the sounds individually, he played it for me. Yeah, he's just got the the hours. Yeah, and then my phone rang during, and then he just started. It was like a Beethoven song at the time, and then he starts playing along to the <laughs> phone ring. I'm like, can't even help it. <laughs> Yeah, it was just like part of it. And I was like, holy fuck, there's levels to this game. And I remember when I was a kid, you just gave me like a random memory, but I, like when we were all learning how to play music in grade school mm. and we had those recorders, like those tiny <laughs> plastic, like straight flutes there. I remember those I don't things. know why it's called a recorder. That's confusing. But um, I, I like, I, I, I shined. People were surprised. Like, like, like the, the, we, were, we were about to play this game, like exactly like you're saying, like the teacher would play something and then they would, we would try to play it back hmm. and she's just explaining the rules sort of of the game and i start playing back what she's playing and then like she she's like oh that was good and then she plays a little something else and then i play it back <laughs> and then we did that for like like two minutes like it was just me and her and the whole class is <laughs> like oh fuck, fuck sammy's got yeah. music chopped i was like in grade one you know so everyone's impressed wow. and shit but like that just to say like i had exposure i guess like i had music is that your first time playing the recorder or you guys were kind of seasoned into it at that time not seasoned but it wasn't the first time okay. like they had gave it to us yeah. uh, i think we were able to bring it home i'm sure i fucked around with it a little bit but it's like i could already kind of speak through mm. it and it's a simple instrument you know but like yeah. then it, then i played the clarinet and i played the saxophone like this kind of evolution and it just kind of died because it was all in high school sax is a beautiful sound oh it really is Fuck, a guy oh, came to the jam with a sax actually oh, and he man. fucking ripped it man oh, yeah yeah it's hard to make it sound good like we had a you know, the drums, the guitar, yeah. the bassist was really clean also. He knew mm -hmm. what he was doing. He was like holding up everybody. When he left, it kind of like died down. Oh, really? But the saxophone guy came in and he was just ripping it also. Like really Where talented. Where was this? Uh, I don't, I'm bad with fit like was 3D like a bar space. Or was just yeah. Like, oh, yeah? <laughs> it's called uh, Hemisphere Gauche, like left hemisphere. Yeah. Very cool name. Yeah. That's like a perfect bar name. It's funny. I liked it. <laughs> and it's just for players or people can go there and just watch? And it's a jam night. I think it was, uh, it's like Sunday nights or something. Okay. And uh, there's like, it's completely dead. There's like a few people who will come in to watch and listen. A lot of people came in like intrigued also because mm -hmm. they're just passing by. And then my friend even pointed it out. He goes, everybody looks, nobody comes in. But then like one or two people come in Wow. and they just sit there, they grab a beer and they listen to people fuck. fucking around. You need to fuck with that more, man. Just it's dude there. it's so cool especially because like there's this kind of like build up you mm -hmm. know like we're not a band we don't know what's going on but we all kind of speak this language and then there's this chaos mm -hmm. and we and then like let's say the drummer just kind of it's kind of like he listens to like you just single something out like the bass yeah. starts making sense and you start drumming to it the guitarist just conforms to it or something and then nice. you just suddenly have a song yeah. and then some guy some old guy walks up and starts singing oh. making up lyrics or something or or it just sounds enough like a song i remember they were playing something and the mic was set up and it kind of like it was bluesy so it kind of sounded like this other song so i just leaned to my friend and i start singing the song in his ear and then i kind of like point to the Mike, because yeah. I know he knows the song, I know he knows the words, and he go, he just kind of understood. He walks up, starts singing it, and it fucking wow. worked. And I was like, "That's awesome, man!" I, that, I have a client who's a bass so bass guitarist and uh, a bass player, and uh, he told me that exact thing. <clears throat> it's literally a, a conversation when you're playing like a jam, and you're communicating with that person's instrument, and yeah. it's like you you say something, they respond, and then it's a full conversation, and then someone jumps in with it like a little a little a little something else and then you you like a three-way conversation it's just literally that yeah. so it's cool you use that analogy because he said the same thing 
it's it's like it's almost not an analogy anymore like people it's it's a nice way of putting it so mm. that you 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 it shifts into this other context and you can learn it with a different spirit mm. but it's true like yeah. there, there's this amazing ted talk or it's it's by ted but it's like a guy it's just like a voiceover and they're just watching him play and he's a really good bassist i cannot remember his name right now okay he's so talented he has two other brothers who are like amazing at guitar and drums and stuff like that and they met, they had a band I'm trying to remember his name. Anyway, if you Google music as a language and then just write Ted or something, you see this guy. He's like a chubby dude. He's a black dude. He's playing the bass. He's like he's playing like a amazing grace. He's using like natural harmonics wow. and he's untuning it as he plays like so that the harmonics match the, the... It's crazy. He's really good. But the whole time he's talking and he's just saying like music's a language. How did you learn your language? You didn't go to school first. You just jammed. Hmm. You just like spoke... And, and the, you, the people you were practicing or jamming with, quote unquote, like they were pros. Hmm. They were professionals. They had a, that 10,000 plus hours nice. just speaking like it's so natural to them. And when you made a mistake, it didn't matter. You know, when you first started speaking, hmm. your parents were so happy. They couldn't fucking help it. They're yeah. like, oh, my God, the thing that came out of us yeah. is now becoming like a interacting human. It's a, it's Fuck. like, wow. <laughs> so all this positive reinforcement and stuff. And like he just wants people music to be treated that way nice and and it's i i, I just really resigned to that i really love that that's amazing so the fuck is his name though man <laughs> i wish i could remember his name like i'll side you google, can google it, it. While it yeah it's funny because it's a, it's kind of ironic that yesterday i was walking uh lily i was walking my dog just near high school and I started hearing the, the high school band playing so i just slowed down with her and they were fucking playing aladdin's theme song but the whole theme song. And I just stood there for like four minutes. And I'm like, that's a cool fucking teacher showing the kids yeah. Aladdin, you know? And they're just, everyone was playing it. It was really cool, man. Yeah, I agree with you. There's, um, we didn't have any of that in my school. It was just like fucking. Oh, that's too bad. Boring we had a cool music songs, teacher you know? also. No, we, we learned one, I think it was called The Tempest. And it was kind of like a classical song. You could use every <clears throat> instrument. There's the, psh, there's like the fucking moments of like crescendos and. And mm -hmm. you got to play soft sometimes. It was a good, like, teaching tool, a good learning tool. Yeah. But uh, we would just play, like, Daft Punk sometimes. Like, we would just find That's songs. Cool. Yeah. One kid would come in, like, this kid, Sean, a friend of ours, he was, like, trombone. And he would just come f home from, f like, he would, like, figure out, a s like, a song. And then other people would jump on or not, depending mm -hmm. on if they liked the song. And we would just kind of find songs like that. And uh, it was a little, like, uh, exclusive. Like, uh, like, we would some people just didn't have the talent or the interest you know and then it would mm. just be like a like half the people playing half the uh, people listening it was clunky also but it, the teacher was really nice right. she was super cool and she got pregnant at some point so there was like this fucking rush of like substitutes coming in and out for a year and it was horrible man because she was yeah. so amazing if i saw her in the street i'd fucking hug her like yeah. i just remember her face i don't even remember her name right now she had this a French accent hmm. but she was like really clean in English and she just loved music and loved teaching nice Victor Wooten by the way the music as a language okay Victor, Victor Wooten w okay like cool. he's just an incredible bassist when you check him out that's <sighs> and it's a TED talk play. it's not a talk a TEDx like yeah or something no it's like it's like a produced video okay. like he's just in a <laughs> it's really cool actually he's like in a room and there's all these like um, stand up bass like bodies okay. like they're they're being manufactured or something. He's just in that room. It's like a, there's like a good sound, mm -hmm. and he's just playing, and the camera's just like spinning around him. And then there's just a voiceover of him nice. riffing on I'm what he thinks out, music man. is. Yeah, which is cool because we were talking about teachers and good or bad teachers. And for for my music experience in high school was just a, maybe it was me. I was a shitty student that too. <laughs> But the <laughs> <laughs> high school <laughs> <laughs> terrible student. But the teacher didn't engage me, and I, I kind of look back at it. And I'm like, fuck. If I just had a, maybe a different experience, I would have been way earlier on. I jumped into music, like a little bit more into the language instead of just by feel, you know, yeah. like self taught versus actually learning a, like the clarinet. I wish I played that with actual seriousness and not just swinging it around like I was a big dick at the time. <laughs> <laughs> just having fun with it. But talking about teachers, it's like the perfect segue into the topic for today. Yeah. You know, we're okay. So we want to essentially just get into people who've influenced us. I yeah. feel like this is something we'll naturally talk about all the time forever, mm -hmm. but it'd be cool to just sit and be like, hey, 
here's a list of people. It might I, like we've talked about it at, at the risk of the podcast being a little boring, mm -hmm. which I don't think it will be because Definitely we can not. talk a little bit about each person. And I think we'll think of new people as we go. Also, yeah. oh, we'll just yeah. be like, oh, shit, this guy, you know, and yeah. and uh, I mean, I don't I think we can encourage each other also to talk about people who might not be well known or famous at all. We mm -hmm. can talk about how our parents influenced us or how like I, I, I can think of some high school teachers who changed my life. Nice. Completely changed my life. Wow. There's always that one or two teachers. I can even make a chain, sort of like an of ideas, where people woke me up, like things woke me up. As a, as you get older, maybe, mm -hmm. and then there's like you know fucking ten ayahuasca ceremonies and a salvia trip and a and a death in the family, like all these crazy things that yeah. that just start speeding up as you get older. But when I'm younger, I feel when I was younger, I feel like I have these these stamps, these moments, nice. these big moments. And how important is that? Uh, it's for guidance and and for ref reference points for humility mm -hmm. reference points are really important for humility too because i feel less serious about my my personal evolution i i, I obviously have a huge hand in it which is kind of something i'm coming to grips with now or yeah. maybe I will forever but to to think of like my just I don't know random example my my uh, math teacher Mr. Kemp Forrest I think he passed away actually but he was so he loved math and he, mm. he was a good teacher and he didn't he, he mispronounced everyone's last name he just didn't care he busted everybody's balls and like sometimes for five minutes he would just talk about something random and one day I'm just like what are you, what are you talking about because I know you're smart so I just kind of like tune in and I realized he's asking people and he asks me, he goes like, you put your socks on before or your pants? You told me this story. I did already? Yeah, yeah, That's a perfect. long time ago. Good. So that, that was one of the first times I thought about thinking, like I, like I thought about logic. I thought <laughs> about having a way or an efficiency in yeah. anything yeah. because I was, he never explained why he asked that. <laughs> and then I'm like, why would he ask that? And then I tried putting my socks on before my pants because i said pants hmm. i don't know why i used to put my pants on first but I, who, who knows you know we, we do these things without thinking everyone listening you put your left shoe before your right shoe every time or something like that and you don't even notice you don't think about it but you fucking do it 99 yeah. percent of the time you put that same foot first hmm. it's just fascia muscle memory whatever familiarity but i just i i put the socks on first one day because he gave me this like scoff and didn't explain why about me putting my pants on first. And it was just easier. He's, he's, if I have my pants on and I put my socks on, it's like tight around the waist. Like it's harder to bend down. And if I have my socks on before my pants, it's easier to slide my <laughs> pants on. He just could cough and need the shit out of you. He really like broke you. It broke your pattern, man. You had to really think about it. Disruption, he, right? Yeah. I, well, anyway, my, my point, all of that to say that there's a humility involved because I'm not fully responsible for my evolution at the beginning. Mm. I just feel like I'm lucky, mm. you know, uh, uh, to be, uh, and it's not lucky versus unlucky because I'm here, I'm alive. Yeah. I get to be conscious of it and now kind of govern my own growth and, and advance it or, or speed it up or, yes. or whatever. It's definitely affected by influencers and surroundings, man. Yeah, that's why we call them influencers. Yeah. That's like the kind of the title, like the yeah. silent title of this podcast. Yeah, man, and you know, it's it's like these little things, sometimes it could be a sentence or something you heard, overheard someone or someone directly giving you a message. It's all shaping you. And you don't, well, it's all shaping you, but you don't know what hits you and when. Some, some things popped up a year later. I'm like, fuck, I finally understood what he meant back then. You yeah. Know, that happens quite often. Yeah, a lot of, I mean, parents give us advice all the fucking time and you, you drown it out because it's your fucking parents. Yeah, my mother gave me this this quote that still stuck with me. It was like four years ago she told it to me or three years ago. And I forgot what we were talking about. I think I was telling her about this thing seems like a good opportunity mm. because it's 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 presented well, whatever. And she just looked at me. She's like, you got to remember all that, shine, all that shines is not always gold. And I'm just like, fuck. <laughs> that stupid sound bite <laughs> stuck with me. And at the moment I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. And then I went home that night. I'm like, fucking Christ. That was like, super profound and like w wisdom from my fucking mother that I kind of put in a category that like I, I've learned everything from you yeah yeah you know and then she just yeah. like shook my whole foundation with such a simple truth just it's like a truism like a, the, the words you've heard a million times huh? just formed a different way all that shine is not always gold or sorry it was all that glitters is not always gold yeah I guess that's like same, the famous same. line yeah. yeah 
but I never heard it. And just from hearing, I'm like, fuck, that was learned to her by something in her life that actually gave her that nugget of information. So something at one point in her life, she attained that knowledge and it's passed on through the gener- through the generation from when I needed that, you know? That's the respect your elders thing. That's like, I guess respect your elders is too simple. Mm. And it's like, this is why. <clears throat> like, there isn't number, like the, the age is a number, like is, is a good thing to think about for many contexts. But one way or another, anyone you talk to has something they can show you. And if they're older and they've had a little bit of practice or whatever, you know, there's just, there's, there's kernels of wisdom just kind of like peppered into what they're talking about, Mm. whether they like it or not. It's just in there. They've been around. Yeah. They're literally older than you. It's, uh, it's funny. I had this conversation yesterday of just that. And for the most part, I think we're seeing a lot of people lost more than ever right now is they didn't get guidance we're in a culture where the elders aren't really looked after and respected. Yeah, and that, I mean, they're busy making ends meet until they fucking croak. It's, it's yeah. really sad. Yeah, we don't really seek wisdom the same way traditionally the ancestors were looked at passing wisdom down. It's Now it's just kind of everyone's on the grind. Do your shit, I'm doing my shit. Yeah. You know, and it's there's some real guidance that we can attain from just listening to the older to the older people that have the path but we're seeing that more with social media and just who we're going to be speaking about and like certain influencers that literally shaped us yeah but it, it stays cerebral you know if you're if your grandmother tells you something and it hits you and you respect her and you love her and it makes sense and she thought about who you are when she said it or maybe not but there's something closer about it you know it, it takes time i find to build that relationship i think some people can feel that way about like Bruce Lee or Alan Watts or like you can really get into these people's lives and you'll never know even if you even me and you you will never know deeply for sure a hundred percent but they're they're you can get there it's just it's like it's roundabout I find there's Mm. still this value or that there's there's we're closed off to to our real resources I mean I don't want to stand on a soapbox here and complain about society but they're it's it's true you know the, yeah. we, we don't we don't have a relationship with our future with our death anymore and mm. and that manifests in some really like inconsiderate and and weird ways yeah anyway i'm just ranting but uh it's funny but I, I don't know who i would feel that way about like outside of my family do you mm. have anyone that you feel like you know like you talk about parents mckenna a lot but yeah. I don't know, like it's he. Well, he was his words are powerful. Definitely in the beginning of my psychedelic journey, Terrence McKenna was like my number one go to mm. uh, fucking manual. You know, just some of his talks were just so profound. And the way he illustrates those realms with his words, just so carefully thought out. Yeah, there's something general about it for the person who's going to experience it also. But, but like v- the way he talks is so. <laughs> ripe with detail yeah. and and then he's not afraid to go really deep into detail about his personal experiences and just like this is what happened to me and then and he's almost like an authority hmm. he's like this is the realm this is how i experience it it's 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 weird because he was so smart and it's like don't aren't you afraid of like influencing other people's interpretation but i think he's just like he's just putting it out there saying fuck it but he was like we all influence each yeah. other like he he understood yeah. memes and culture and 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 just the way we have a sort of amnesia and we just kind of copy the last generation and yeah. and he's like I'm part of that I may as well throw in some cool stuff and there's some quotes that stick with me from him it's just he had one when he spoke about DMT it was like I think Terrence McKenna left the foundation for how to do the DMT experience he's like the three deep breath, three deep tokes mm-hmm. and like the third one you hold it in as long as you can and like after two you're gonna be like no I don't want to go for third He's like, just do Trust it anyway. <laughs> With his, he has the perfect voice for the psychedelic realms too. Yeah, and take it easy. But take it. But take it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was hilarious. He's like, when in doubt, double the dose. And th- <laughs> that's stuck with me, man. And it's like, anytime, like, fuck, how much should I take? Oh, fuck it. Put double what I just put. Yeah, what a nut job. <laughs> but I fucking live by it, man. And it seemed okay. But it yeah. also applies to everything. It's like, when you're in doubt, just double down on it. He was a bit of a, like, he just, I think he had a genuine fun experiencing experimenting with himself like i i see us like a parallel with me and yoga and i'm only really able to show or teach if my practice is strong 
his practice was strong. Mm. So he's just able to, he just comes out of him, you know, he's just like, you know, five grad, five, five dried grams in a dark room. Like yeah. I, I'm sure he didn't invent the concept of sensory deprivation and, and high dosages and, and solitude. And these, these things combine are a powerful set and setting, but just the way he, he even coined the phrase heroic dose <laughs> yeah. almost as like a warning, but like, like, you know, like he just, like I just quoted him, like, take it easy, but take it, yeah. you know, like, don't, don't just sit there there's so much to see so much to explore so yeah. much to add to the experience you know he talked about i think it was ketamine or or mdma or something and it was like kind of like a newer drug and he said it felt like walking through an empty office building like there's nothing there yet wow like we inform the space mm. on some level and it needs to grow like it's it's uh it's interesting kind of, it's kind of the feeling i get with salvia i did it on sunday mm. night it's like Whenever I do it, I'm like, you're a young plant. Like, you don't have much in the database. Like, most people have been just fucking tripping out and freaking out. And Compared just, to weed or ayahuasca or something, that's just like I just feel clear. like, yeah, and it's more of an infantile state of, but it's it's not to say it's not useful. It just It just hasn't. It's hard to really put into words, but there is something like fresher about it or like just you know what maybe like what like what we were saying earlier like there's just less people talking about it i'm literally less informed about what i why what i am to expect mm -hmm. and then i might because of the nature of psychedelic drugs i might experience less because i just impose less or mm -hmm. have less information to to bring to the to the cauldron of whatever the fuck that experience is is brewing yeah and Terrence spoke a lot about salvia and how it's the most mis mis misinterpreted, misrepresented psychedelic and that it's super profound. And that's kind of like sparked me for that moment in my life where I was just like, fuck, I got to figure out salvia. Just doing it like every night for like 30 days. I think I days. got interested through him, through him also for with salvia. Yeah. I learned it was a, there's a reverse tolerance and, and like you, you can't get high like twice in a row, no. but the next day it'll be stronger. Yeah. And, and it even kind of different. It gets more like mushroomy. It gets like less intense, but somehow lasts longer. And like th it becomes very different. And it's a it's a form of sage. And it makes you think <clears throat> uh, that's why they called it sage, probably. You know, like it, it had this enlightening property to it. Wow. If you chewed a bunch of like they, the traditionally they used to roll like 60 leaves into this like pill or joint looking thing. And they would fucking th toss it back and chew it. And maybe yeah. have something they would chew it like lemon hours. juice or something to break it down. Yeah, yeah they would just chew yeah. it forever and, and until there was fucking nothing left. Yeah. And and you would get blasted, yeah. apparently. I've never tried this because we just get like, uh, you know, the 30X or whatever, the little uh, vial <laughs> of like... I still have my last vial, the last... There's like two doses left and then there's no more way to get it anymore. That, I can't believe we lived through like a, like a criminalization of a drug. Like there used to, there was a moment when people just like realized it and then there were salvia bars and shit and it was such a strange time. Like people just getting fucking out, like yeah. having out of body experiences like the next door over. The guy would come, it's a bar, you know, yeah. like you could order a drink or something, but the guy, like there's pillows on the floor. It's like a lounge <laughs> kind of thing. There's soft music. There's other people taking salvia <laughs> around you in terms of set and setting, maybe not the best idea, Definitely not. but like the guy comes and you're not allowed to touch the thing. Cause you're going to drop it. If you get like blasted yeah. off and shit. And, and then they're like, what enlightening experiences <laughs> illegal. I think a morons ruined it for us because there's so many videos online just people panicking freaking out running around the house yeah. like I've, I've seen there. videos of people seizuring <laughs> for me salvia I've never had that it's always been like in a meditative state dude I had a friend <laughs> fucking he was laughing his ass off and then death like just <laughs> stone face it was the creepiest thing I ever seen <laughs> <laughs> and then just like looking through me and I went like oh he's not here anymore <laughs> And he just, he's like, just, I, I, could, I, I could see in his eyes this like frantic attempt to process. Wow. And it just not working. It just, huh? Huh? What? Huh? huh? <laughs> it's so funny, man. I've had hilarious descriptions also. Like, you know, like this, like people warning me, like you're, you lose touch with reality. You really need another person there. You need to be careful, this and that. And mm. not in a scary way, but these people like just, you know, like you don't know what's going to happen. You can't speak English anymore. Yeah. You, you, you might have a complete out of body experience, mm. totally hundred percent other life, other experience. Like I, like I described and a lot of other people described. Yeah. And, and that can be dangerous. 
because you could still be walking around or like touching stuff. For or, the inexperienced, it can be. It's better to have a sitter. Hundred percent. I think in general. Yeah. I know. I know you dabble there, and you don't. Uh, I. I've but never I mean, you, you know you. Yeah. Do you think? I prefer being alone for Salvia. I'm sure you have some awareness, and you can like stay lying down or something. And yeah. I mean. It's the funniest thing is because I'll take like six hits of salvia, big hits. Jesus Christ. And I'll look at the pipe and the whole room is gone. And my focus is on the pipe. I'm like, okay, let's put this down nice and slow. <laughs> yeah, like there's a tunnel. Actually, it's funny that you say that because I was just thinking in the story. Like um, a friend of mine, two friends of mine are smoking salvia on their own. They're not like super into this stuff. Mm. But we had like a salvia room pretty much for a time in our nice. apartment. And this guy was my roommate. Our friend comes over. I w- no one else was there, I don't think. Anyway, details of the story aside, I'm having like a fucking... You know when you get like too detailed in the story <laughs> and you're starting to lose the audience kind of thing? So long story fucking short, these guys blast off at the same time like morons. I love them, but you know, it's just a... Mm. We, we all do stupid things sometimes. And so the girl starts freaking out. Like she's not having a good time. She's really panicking. And it's... and the, So the guy is getting high at the same time and he like the way he describes it is like he wills like that little tunnel of clarity where you see the pipe like he just wills it to to stay open <laughs> and he just like he's like fighting wow. like the like the the the, the periphery are like yeah. sh- closing in and shaking <laughs> reality out of his fucking spirit but he's like no and he's like f- like forcing himself to be sober and like helping the girl out Ooh, that's yeah that's a tough one must have been very stressful yeah. but it's just interesting that you can do that and mm-hmm. like we talk about the the guy who does our like the ceremonies for ayahuasca and he he can really be present with it and not be like Affected on a ride much, yeah. so to speak yeah and, and he's drinking the same dose as us you know the whole exactly. night exactly there's just a use uh, uh, um, a, a familiarity I and it's also it. oh uh, please I asked him about like what is it like how does it affect you the when you drink yeah, ayahuasca. yeah we talked about it. that's why I brought it up yeah and he said it was like it's come to a point where he just sees what it does to his body. Yeah. Like just, oh, little little change here and there. And th- 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 it's subtle there because it's like the repercussion of the work is to be really comfortable at, in that observer identification. Yes. And that, I think globally with any experience, allows that to be possible. There's a, there's a crazy story. I think it was Neem Karuli Baba or like some guru from the past. Someone gave him like, they were going to give him a blotter. Like, hey, you want to try this out kind of thing. Like, you, you know. You, What's a blotter? Like a piece of uh, acid paper. Okay. Yeah. Like the LSD uh, little the cup. tub. Yeah. Hmm. And so the guy has his, like his hands out and he has like the tiny piece of paper and he has the entire blotter on in the other hand. <laughs> and so the guy, I don't know if he misunderstood or something, but he takes the whole piece of paper and folds it up and tosses it in his <laughs> mouth. And, and the guy just looks at him like he just like. Uh, jumped off a cliff essentially right <laughs> but but this guy's like a crazy enlightened like whatever you want to call it mm. and he like his apparently what happened is his eyes like roll in the back of his head for a second <laughs> and he's like like everyone thinks he's gonna die or something <laughs> and then he just kind of and he goes wow that was interesting Whoa. and he's completely sober he's just like huh Whoa. so like his body is 90 percent lsd at this point <laughs> and he's just like interesting <laughs> What did he have to say about it? The guy? Mm. I think that's all he said. I mean, that's that's the story I heard. It's okay. just kind of like this half myth at this point. Wow. But it's he just he just didn't like. Essentially, it's like your body's going on a ride, and a lot of the identif- identity with the body goes with the ride. Mm. You know that the ego, everything, everything gets pulled in with it, and th- that creates a possibility for detachment because you don't want to go on the ride anymore, or you mm. want to just observe the ride and like accepted and like all this all the things that that come out all the surrender and gratitude yeah. and everything all the all the crashing reality and the psychedelia itself like yeah. i think that's part of it is like your 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 body's being yanked and a lot of you identifies as the body so you feel like you're being yanked and you start noticing that you're not being yanked mm. and then you can just <clears throat> sit there and be you you know and it's it's like you know when you have a gun that doesn't aim right so you you just adjust you know it like leans left, so you go, you compensate. Mm. That's I feel like that's what they're doing. You're you're in the observer seat. Your body suddenly is fucking tilty for tilted forty five degrees. 
so so you're you're just you just do everything at like a negative 45 and it's like as if you're sober yeah Yeah. you're just presenting what you want to present all the time despite the inner world despite the outer world it's really a lot of inner work and practice to get to that yeah that's i guess that's what i was getting at but it's 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 cool to think about it's talking of surrender it's like terence mckenna one of his videos you can find on YouTube, just write Terrence McKenna um, describes the DMT experience or something. Mm-hmm. It's like a 10 minute clip. There's one animated with, with nice music in the background. And he just walks you through the entire experience, which is good and bad. It gave me a lot of high expectations mm-hmm. to have a similar experience. And then when I did DMT, it was like and nothing for thought. itself after a certain point. But yeah. there is kind of these disappointment moments. I've had quite a few. And yeah. It's important for the listener to hear is just like really take it for a great assault what everyone reports on YouTube and mm-hmm. wherever you look podcasts. I think it's a fear mixed with curiosity. Like you just want to hear other people who've come out the other side and they're it helps. Okay, if it not does help. better for it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's definitely helps, but it also there's a bitter end to the stick too. It's mm-hmm. the yin and yang of it is the yang is that you will have a certain level of expectation going into an experience and try to eliminate that. You know, if you can, just like, okay, separate, that's that person's experience, this is my experience, it's probably not going to be the same, and then you'll you'll eliminate disappointment. Mm. But Terrence McKenna had a great 10-minute explanation just to listen. If you've never done anything before, it's so beautiful. And he talks about, like, at 30 seconds in, this happens, <laughs> and then the chrysanthemum opens up, <laughs> and you enter, and they say, come on in. Uh-huh. And he's like, hello. And so I one, love his voice, man. Oh, I love his voice. I Not just his words and his thoughts and the way he formed. Like his, so psychedelic. All of it is so good. Yeah, he's, he's psychedelic. He's, he's, he really is. He's and I hear the way he talks in his brother. Yeah. I hear the... He has like a na- more nasally voice and a deeper voice. But it, they have those little cracks that are so similar. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, Dennis McKenna, man. There's something there. Yeah, Dennis is incredible, man. But I, I want to the say more that, I look into him, yeah. Oh, I didn't mean to. I just, I just want to say that Terrence McKenna had such a strong piece of advice that is the same, worded differently, but the same mechanism as surrender is just don't give in to astonishment. And he used to say that in the DMT realms is that he would be so amazed by the geometry and the th- and the the artwork that you do see, and it's reported for most people there is like these incredible geometric colorful patterns that you can't ever explain yeah you can't yeah multi-dimensional <sighs> nonsense that are talking to you literally fucking <laughs> that's it it's conscious somehow it's all, they're all embedded in each other in some strange way like it's it's and all so and it's fractal and it just constantly shift if you focus in on it it just it's already different than what, what you saw at your peripheral yeah and it's just forming and shaping so he was saying that he had like a like an alien type of entity talking to him and saying he was like getting amazed by the geometry and they're like, look here, focus, don't be, don't give in to astonishment, focus. And that was like his mantra is like, okay, well, forget the beautiful patterns. What is the message you're trying to say to me? And that, that, oh, that piece of advice fucking stuck with me in all my trips from the, from that day on. And that was maybe back in 2013 I heard it. I'm going to try to integrate that because it's really good. It, it, you, That's, uh, in other words, an advice that I gave a lot uh, for lucid dreaming mm. because you just wake up the first few times you're just uh, astonished yeah. and it and it's you're looking at the wrong thing you can't help it it's novel and you're freaking out and but but in a in a psychedelic state you're you're uh, you, you're you're looking at the tree instead of the forest sort of like you're yeah. you're lo- you're missing the bigger picture if you're if you're just like whoa fucking colors it's like yeah that's fun mm-hmm. and and really intriguing but at a certain point, you're naturally going to just want to look past that. And what's fun is that the the plant even like kind of tr- like tries to get your attention. Like, like, hey, <laughs> like a dog. And like, hey, 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 yeah. over here. And that's that's hilarious. the thing is that that's why there's it's a almost a curriculum when you do the psychedelics. It's the beginning stages. It's you start. Obviously, everyone starts usually lower doses. Just like a, you know, the most common theme is you'll hear someone doing like a two grams or a gram and a half of mushrooms with some buddies, mm-hmm. and they're just enjoying the day conver- conversation, and that's it. And it's, it's like you're training yourself to get used to what it's like over there, and then eventually, when you start doing it more and more, it's the patterns, the geometry, the shifting in reality, and like the, like, the the the, the state of mind is you kind of like okay, what's the message behind this? And you hope to get to that. Some people. Their limit is the colors and the geometry, and that's all they ever want to see, and that's beautiful too, you know. Yeah, but, but it's like 
it's like noticing calligraphy but not reading the word it's like you're and just appreciating that is, there is both. something nice about that <laughs> yeah. but when you start looking further through it you're like okay and like ayahuasca for example it's like the beginning was very like patterny and like beautiful and now it's like i kind of just like in the beginning stages of it i'm i kind of like you know, if you have, everyone has those images of someone going through the forest, a jungle with like a, a machete and they're like moving away the, the mm-hmm. vines as they go through the forest. It's kind of like that now when I go into the psychic dialogue experience. It's like, okay, these are beautiful fucking pyramids and patterns that I've seen many times before. Let me, what's going on here? Where am I going to? And like, that's where I've noticed the heights of my experiences are like really deepening. And it's just, there's like, even if I go in without an intention, I'm just looking in the experience to find that fruit. You know, yeah. yeah. I wonder if because I I feel what you're saying, and I feel like I get caught staring at things, and I, it's it's like maybe a like a FOMO vibe, you know, like there like what is what am I supposed to be learning from this? It's like oh, I'm experiencing something. Like it's like you're sitting there waiting for experiences essentially, and then you try to like squeeze the juice out of all of them, mm. and you're also kind of on a roller coaster. So it's like you're you know you're 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 gra- trying to grab the the mail bag like, you know the train guys used to grab the mail yeah. it was just like hanging and they don't stop the train and they just grab it like that's you're trying to do that yeah so it, it's it's kind of it's a natural progression like you were saying it's like a like a curriculum like you can't help it's almost like you're just blind to the things that you're not ready for like you get this massive download but a lot of it is just kind of like okay we're gonna temporarily like re-drudge some shit Hmm. that you're you think you're cool with but you're at, you still have a, some sore spots let's kind of settle that down let's put a pin in it let's like or not a pin like not ignore it but like let's let's just dissipate that a little bit so that you can get to that next level and that happens almost every time hmm. but there's always next level next level next level next level and then suddenly you're in some really crazy spots learning some really pertinent specific or global sh- truths uh, that might rock you for the rest of your life and they might not yeah. a lot of times it could be just like a visceral experience and you don't know what the fuck's going on and you just kind of have to put words to it or, or figure it out and and talk to people who've been in that realm that's where Terrence McKenna and stuff like that come in handy also when you when you've been there already and you go back hmm. And all these people that we want to talk about, they, yeah, they're they just have wizards with context. their words. Yeah. And they can illustrate. It's like, that's their gift. It's like, you're talking about language and music. It's their literally language is able to translate that experience so much more fluid through their, their vocabulary. And Especially their McKenna. He was a, yeah. he was like a, he was like an Alex Gray level painter, mm-hmm. you know, like it, there was artistry to it, but there was a precision and practice in the way he spoke yeah he this guy was a human dictionary i learned so many fucking words listening to that guy like fuck. what the fuck was that sometimes i would have to pause like what the fuck did that mean what the hell is glossolalia <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> so i feel he just makes up some words yeah and dennis mckenna had a funny story on the jerry once i think he's like he, terrence did like a three-hour speech or something and then dennis asked him he's like what was that all about? He's like i have no idea just <laughs> fucking for ready. sure he was in a flow for <laughs> sure you could tell dude eventually he's just getting paid to talk yeah. and this is back in the day he even mentioned it he goes like this is people would just we're sit not and listen the, to him yeah but we're like, talking the 70s and 80s it's right? word of mouth yeah it's like uh magazines or like it's not now where you How have a facebook group oh, dude there was no way there was no internet where there's a will there's a way man we, we got this a. far humans are yeah, it's true. When you speak artists. the fucking truth, it, 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 people will listen. But I'm happy that you too. brought up, uh, yeah. That too. That's qu- he, he had quality to it. Yeah. It's, it's for sure. Yeah, I really had something to say. And like, you can find, for those who never heard of Terrence McKenna, yeah, just listening to him, doing chores or whatever, fucking cleaning your house, put Terrence McKenna in the back for two hours. I think there's even like a, there's a lot of like Alan Watts, Manly P. Hall, uh, Terrence McKenna there, there's something like you just google like McKenna archive or something on YouTube and yeah. it's like a guy just put everything in one spot for you yeah. and sometimes the audio quality is bad etc sometimes you need subtitles or you know it's just yeah. the way it is they're old audio files like three hour speeches you're just like oh fuck that's yeah, a podcast right there and it's just him talking yeah if you're lucky you find a yeah that he anyway I'm happy you brought up Alex Gray man yeah let's was, talk about him a little bit one of my first so you know, a lot of these people that influence me, it's funny enough that they branched out of the Joe Rogan experience. It's like, I would have never heard about these I, people. I, I, I kind of got into Joe from Terrence. Really? Yeah. I don't remember who told me about Terrence. And there was my, my buddy Jay, actually, because he's reading books on <clears> that he wrote and stuff. But just fun fact, I'm sure so many people learned about Terrence McKenna through Joe Rogan. Yeah, I actually... The reverse. Was the that's pretty, that's yeah. pretty awesome. 
fuck so glad too because i was really resisting it mm-hmm. you know the, uh, people were like people, my friend of mine he's like 300 podcasts in or something okay and and he's like you got to listen to joe rogan you're gonna love it like you're that kind of person and i'm just like i don't listen to podcasts <laughs> Now it's like I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> it's, it's like, what is life? Fast forward. That's yeah. crazy. Man. Anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, but so it, a lot of the people that influenced me came from that from that podcast. Like many others probably listening to this who have, are JRE fans. It's like, dude, it's uh, I can't even. I look at him like a medium. Yeah. Oh, dude. Rogan. Yeah. Rogan's a huge influencer yeah. on his own, even his free uh, his lifestyle. But then the facility that he gives to. I can't, I can I, I'm, I'm stumbling on the amount of names, it's you know, nuts. Like Cameron Haynes, yeah. Aubrey Marcus, yeah. Dr. Rhonda Patrick. I could, Fuck. I could do that for days. Yeah. I could just, ba, 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 I could just forever. Like just, Even Chris Ryan, Dr. Chris Ryan had some fucking epic podcasts. Chris he's been Ryan's on. It's fun, man. Yeah. I forgot about him. I love that guy. I know. He's, His podcast's actually really good. I haven't downloaded one in a while. Oh yeah. I, I've never actually, the problem is the GRE is already three hours. Tangentially speaking, yeah. Ten, tangen, yeah. Please. It's a mouthful. Tangent. I don't even know. Tangentially. It. Tangentially speaking, yeah. <laughs> but him, they usually they do it once or twice a year. Him, Rogan, and uh, Duncan. So I think the, they call it the three. Uh, no, the shrimp brigade or something. The shrimp. Uh, <laughs> shrimp parade. <laughs> shrimp parade. Like shrimp parade. It's fucking filled with information. Yeah. But Alex Gray, when he first went on the Jerry, Jerry used to mention him quite a few times. It's funny enough, actually, I think I found his artwork through Joe Rogan's old uh, message board, the Rogan board. Mm. And people would just post these psychedelic photos, and I'm like, what is this? This is, like, crazy. And then I would search, oh, it's Alex Gray. Yeah. I mean, it was Tool. Tool, yeah. yeah. That, that album cover. Like, the, there was, like, 3D glasses, like, built mm. into the... It was a genius album, like, case. Like, the case you bought the CD in was fucking trippy i've never seen it in re- in actual reality i've saw Dude, it in in uh, decades Alex's ago book. <laughs> yeah, yeah i was in a friend's car i remember it wow. i don't remember the friend i don't remember where i was i just remember i was in the passenger seat and i'm looking through like that stupid cd holder and he goes oh if you want tool it's like in the actual case because that case is awesome and wow. he starts talking to me about it and he explains to me like how to unfold it so that you can like see the 3d and stuff like it's all one wow. piece but there's like I gotta buy this fucking CD case. I'm sure you could YouTube it or something, but that's how I found out about it. Just having it is so awesome, though. For sure. Yeah. It's like an heirloom at this point. (laughs) Anyway. Alex used to he used to go to concerts and do live paintings while they were fucking singing and and doing their show. That's so cool. Crazy. Yeah. How fast can you do that kind of art? Like he's his art's incredible and like geometric and like symmetrical. Like it's really. There's photos in his book. I actually left the book at the ceremony at the temple. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, It's it's a great book. What was it called? Net of Being. It's Mm. a beautiful Alex Gray book. Has a lot of his artwork. There's like ten new ones since, but there's photos of him doing uh, at Burning Man, just fucking doing a live art show and just painting some insane fucking. That's a vision that he saw that book was great too like i'm really glad you brought it i think on the like that silent day i started flipping through it and mm. it was so cool to have this parallel poem to the to the artwork yeah and sometimes it was just there was like there was paragraphs there was descriptions there was he was talked about art he talked about society like he just he has a lot of information and opinion and he's a very spiritual guy and all of that gets like condensed into these beautiful paintings and drawings and shit yeah and you feel it you see it and now especially even before i did ayahuasca i had this kind of familiarity maybe with that space that that like other world (laughs) and seeing those paintings yeah everyone agrees but like because it's true like there's something he he pulled something back from there and kind of showed it on a on a 2D painting somehow. It's For incredible. me, he's the best translation of those realms into this reality. It's like the depictions that he put, I'm like, I can look at one of them and be like, fuck, I was there. Like, I know where you're you're taking this from. Yeah, yeah. I can't think of better. I don't, I don't know. There's some good artists out there. I don't remember the names like Alex Gray, man. But maybe with music also or, or something else. Like, I, I'm, I think Alex Gray really is number one for me also. I don't know. Yeah. And there's one photo, uh, you probably know what I'm talking about, it's two heads facing each other. It's like the generic uh, illusion photo everyone used to use. It's like two faces t- close together, almost kissing, and it's like, Makes in, like a vase. And there's like a vase in between them. But he created that in like such a different level where it's like two skulls facing each other and there's just psychedelic patterns. Yeah. But in the skulls is like a child baby forming and it's like connected to their fucking brain. 
and it just the level of detail I'm like fucking this, this is a fractal image in a sense like anywhere I look it just feels like something just changed yeah and the there's like hieroglyphs and Maya, Mayan writing and Aztec writing. And it's like, <laughs> fucking Christ, man. He's on another level. Yeah. So. yeah. He's incredible. Well, what else about him? Because I, I feel, especially this day and age where it's like you, a lot of society is just noticing how like mistreated women have been. Hmm. There's this like void. I don't know. An, I don't know anything about his wife. I don't remember her name. Alice I don't Gray. know. Alice. That's why I Recently she's it. been more and more... Uh, uh, by his side and in, in when they do podcasts now she speaks a lot more and talks but about her experience i feel like she she's a wicked artist too man exactly i feel like yeah. she has a lot of stuff that i just don't know about they, they allude to it but it's mm. obviously like alex is the yeah the, the popular one right now you know like the the big name it's funny because he was going through a severe depression he spoke about it net of being like to the point of almost suicidal and then he went to like allison's this is before they're married. He went to, the, or before they were even dating, he went to her apartment party or something. And then she slipped him, she gave him a, a tab of LSD. And then that like go, sprung buddy. this whole <laughs> new ex, um, level of existence that he didn't think he had. Oh, it was like a first time yeah. kind of thing? Oh, first wow. time and just fucking, he like, he described meeting God. <laughs> Some people just get connected, man. Yeah. I feel like I took... Like I was curious when I was younger and I just tried some drugs and, and then, and I, I'm growing into this kind of like respect for them, but it's, I don't, I don't get shocked. I don't get these like, Whoa, my God, I have to change my life moments. Like I have to do all the work myself. It's so annoying. <laughs> some people, man, it's one shot. They fucking got it. You yeah. Know? Other people, it's a lifetime and they're just figuring it out. Huh. I don't think it's I, okay. Yeah. It, it's all good, man. You know, we're all, we're all in the dirt eventually. We're all going down. It's fine. <laughs> Speaking about music, there's one artist I've been really big on right now. Oh, before we switch, though, mm. about Alex Gray. I don't remember, like, where or what it's called, but he has this fucking temple that's... that's Ethion. Eh, oh, that's amazing. It's a Ethion, good name. yeah. And it's, like, a, a lot of his art is showcased, <laughs> and a lot of the architecture is his art also. Yeah. So you have these 3D representations of, like, those faces and it's stuff, like the, crazy the four faces as one kind of thing, like in pillars. Like the outside of his temple is his artwork. It's just not like a normal structured and building. They have ceremonies there. They do like full moon ceremonies, and I'm sure they do like all kinds of like. The, it's uh, in New York, therapy. actually. Oh, wow. Some part of New York. I would love to go with you down is there. Is there one more day. than one? I don't think so, but I I, I just don't know. I'm the is it? It's Ethion is the name of it, but they also call it the Church of uh, Mirrors or something or Sacred Mirrors. Nice. Yeah, it's that's a, beautiful. Yeah, man, I would love to go to an Alex Gray full moon party. It looks pretty awesome, man. <laughs> I like that you called it a party. I'm like, okay, I'm down also. Let's go. Fuck, let's find out about it and go one day. Let's man. go fuck around at the... <laughs> we'll meet some probably interesting people, but... The fucking Church of Sacred Mirrors. That sounds like you're describing the universe. <laughs> sacred it's Mirrors. The, but the church... Like, the, like, imagine life is this church of sacred mirrors. Wow. That's just like this... Like, He boom. probably thought of that, man. And oh, just the way sure, yeah, The it's... way he formed it, he's like... He's such an artistic person hearing him speak too he's just he's another one that I can listen to all day what is it about the like the high pitch kind of <laughs> there's like a nasally there's a way it's very talking, psychedelic it's, they, they, it's, they, they, it's the they, high they, pitch they. overtone kind of voice mm, I don't know but there's a there's a calm also and a kind of but like even though there's a calm there's there's a matching kind of excitement mm. a passion and it's a perfect combination yeah Maybe it's, maybe it's also maybe like we're all talking low because we're all machismo and shit. We're like, <laughs> I'm a man, you know, and he's like, he has nothing to prove. He has the love of his life, and he has yeah. art, and he has he's got he the has long fucking hair. And he's I don't give a fuck. That's it, and he's got all the drugs he needs. And he's yeah. good. Alex Gray, fucking ag bro. What was who are you going to bring up though? You're For music, about music, this is very recent that I started getting into um, Trevor Hall and Xavier Rudd. Those two Xavier artists. Rudd is got some fucking powerful songs, man. Who's Trevor? Trevor Hall, um, Sounds like a lot of the dance party songs, like the like where we usually do our little dance in between ceremony, it's usually Trevor Hall. Oh, cool. Well, actually, no, I might mix it up. It might be Xavier Rudd. Anyway, I've meshed them two together because I think they're buddies <laughs> too. But those, some of that music is just so fucking beautiful because it's carefully the lyrics are so carefully written. Yeah. And it's like they figured out a way to transfer those realms through their sound. And it's fucking, it's beautiful, man. So I've been really listening to them a lot more. There's, it, a, there's a, a band called Medicine for the People. 
There's, I think I have a few on my playlist. Like I, I was like, that's a bold name, you know. But mm. then I heard them, and I went, damn. Like this music is medicine for the people. <laughs> Holy shit! Like the like the wow. there's something powerful and and really deliberate about the sounds and the lyrics and and it, it's it's like a healing. There's something it's hard to describe, but it's cool. Just wanted to throw that out there yes. for you and for whoever's yeah. listening. Medicine of the people. For the people. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's you can find these in all art forms. You can find translations of these kind of state of minds. Mm. You know? It's almost a lot of times also it's the repercussion. You know, like Alex Gray is really showing what he's experienced and it speaks to people on many levels. And then someone like Xavier Rudd might be just compelled to use his art for good and for expansion of consciousness it's just it just it's not necessarily reflecting the the realms mm. as directly but there is this you know one one step down of like that's how that's what made that this made me feel this way and this is what i'm gonna do now with my music or with my whatever nice that's cool yeah man it's it's really nice man to have all these things that you can refer to and just change literally can change your state of mind instantly if you're feeling in a certain mood you can like fucking open an alex gray book or just read a poem that he wrote or see some of his artwork and you're like fuck mm. it's like a wim little hof. nudge wim hof man that's a fucking really epic. change your state of mind <laughs> he's one of the the jerry podcast guests that i think profoundly changed me 100 percent more than like th there's so many attributes to my personality and how i've got here and how i was formed but if i were to use a guide it would be wim hof was up there man just his fucking energy and his charisma and his passion for what he's talking about and his backstory i mean like he really crawled out of the fucking grave man didn't it stem from the death of his wife yeah i think she committed suicide something crazy like that and that that fucking ripples man yeah. that sends some shock waves yeah there must have been so many moments of doubt and fear and Ooh. he has a son and he just turned it into like i'm not gonna let this kill me too wow you know and he's like i love my wife you know but she she did what she did and now we're here you know we're we, this is what i want to focus on mm. i don't, I don't want to speak for him because it's a very profound topic but he really handled it like n naturally you know there was this there was so much pain and such a down moment in his life and I feel like he really addressed it honestly with his son and then they rose up together and I mean he had the colds his whole life you know like he he's he's been dancing and jumping in the snow in his fucking underwear when he was a kid and shit like that yeah but so he knew you know and he had all this yoga background and all these things and he's like why am I letting this happen I, I know I can practice myself into another state and he essentially like rediscovered this like shamanic type of breathing and there's like Tibetan monks doing that shit all the time where they like slap <laughs> I think Rogan brings it up sometimes um, or they, they put like uh, wet rags on their body yeah. and they're in the cold they're outside in, in the snow and with their body heat in, like in their their breathing they dry the rags yes I've read about this it's crazy that's like that's towards their final practice I don't know yeah I just I just know that little it's crazy bit. man and he figured that out all the way across, well, not that far across the world. He's in the Netherlands, or where is he? Is in a, is he in um, that area. Amsterdam? Anywhere, well, I Holland, know. I think, actually. I really don't remember. Anyway, he figured it out. He fucking figured it out that just deep, repetitive breathing, you can heat your body up and just fucking handle any type of temperature for mm. various periods of time. He has this really, he's another kind of scientist where he just like had this Buddhist like I'm going to sit and feel and I'm going to work with that information and try to find tools with my data and he just noticed one day that like you know when you're <laughs> you're you're shivering like your body's trying to go <laughs> like and it's like why why does it want to do that but you're but it's hard because the muscles are spasming and so you're, you're panicking <laughs> yeah like like it's there's something that was calling the body was trying to do a thing and he just starts facilitating that and then and then scientists get involved and there's all this crazy shit going on now and you tell someone about the breathing technique and they they if they're a kind of traditional scientific materialist they're going to roll their eyes at you and then you have to you have to beg them to google it because there's so much science behind what he's showing you now yeah. and it's it's 
it's I don't want to exaggerate, but it's rewriting a lot of medicine mm. or a little bit of medicine because you can you can over oxygenate yourself in a way that people didn't realize that that f- like physicians and scientists didn't think was possible. And, but and also induce the adrenal glands through just breathing without and, the cortisol. That's yeah. what's cool. Yeah, when you get agitated in in day to day life. There's no immediate danger. You get just cortisol. It's fat soluble, stays in your body longer, all that jazz. Google it. I'm not a fucking doctor. <laughs> but if you have an acute moment, you usually get both. But but the adrenaline, like it helps, they, they help each other. Yeah. And but in this case, it's like you just produce adrenaline as if you're about to go bungee jumping. Which they didn't think was possible. Yeah, you just he he, he literally says, <laughs> I took control of my autonomic nervous system. And that before the, the that word means yeah. Autonomic. self-controlling yeah. like not in your control yeah. and he's like well but they wasn't proved until they started studying him and like holy fuck he actually is is he an anomaly and then he started bringing groups and then they were having the same experience yeah, too. they had controlled studies and i mean look he has a huge tolerance to cold and that's built through time yeah he can he went uh most of the way up everest in fucking flip-flops and uh i think just shorts and or shorts <laughs> yeah like he, any, anyone else would lose a toe or something like and i'm sure he came <laughs> close but uh there's some fucking amazing photos of him on like a glacier in a meditative state yeah in, like, I, full honestly lotus. it's on my bucket list i want to do one of his like retreat things Fuck where they yeah. all go together in like the have the you seen what it looks like fucking they're doing they're literally we spoke about this a lot and when we talked about the cold baths but they're doing katas and they're yeah, just yeah. they're having fun and they're like they're it's, like throwing they're, snowballs yeah, they're just they're like, not katas they're just they're, but they're, they're just, like in a horse stance and they're rocking back and yeah, forth and throwing like breathe. karate punches Ooh, yeah, yeah. yeah but it looks like a fucking good time man uh, it does i kind of i kind of try to do that now like i like you know my brother's one of those people who kind of denies the science of it he always makes fun of me like yeah steve jobs tried that and he's dead you know <laughs> like he tried the the natural yeah. medicine route and i'm it's like come on bro you're yeah. just like grouping like that's you're you're straw manning me. Like yeah. it's not you're that's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, Wim Hof won't cure cancer. It might prevent it. I don't fucking know. I don't yeah. know how life works. Yeah. But I then I go in the pool and like it's October and the pool's at sixty five and I and I'm not shaking and I'm doing laps and I'm loving nice. it. And then I get oh, out of there with a huge smile. And whether he notices or not, I I don't care in the end. You know, I'm not trying to change my brother's yeah. life. He's I'm I'm the younger brother, you know, I don't yeah. think I have a lot of influence on him. But I, he can't ignore that. There's something just... I got to come and do that pool, man. Come, bro. 65 is nice. Dude, yeah, it'll get to 60 really soon. And then we can't stay in long. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I did the cryotherapy for the first time. I was invited by this this studio. They just had it. And they, I guess they saw me on Instagram and they wanted to sponsor me a, a session. So I went. Nice. And she's like, it's going to get cold. You got to be careful. Like uh, I'm like, don't worry about it. Just put me in. And she's just watching me. And I'm just like... Whew doing the Wim Hof breathing a little bit slower and then I came out and she's like how was it I'm like I mean it was good <laughs> you could have went colder and she's like look at me like what the fuck <laughs> I think she put it to like 140 or like some like negative or I don't know what what the measure. how long did you stay uh, we did uh, I think two minutes or three minutes was it the was it a chamber or was it like the below the neck uh, my head was nitrogen? exposed okay yeah and this fucking yeah now it's so advanced that your whole body goes in right like they have new i think it's just different technologies like there's there's a freezing ass room and i don't know how they get it that cold but like you know hmm. that's it's definitely better to get your head cold also i went to a spa where they had a fucking it would look like a freezer room and the whole place inside was like snow just like frozen snow and you can just sit on this frozen bench and it was like a fucking like a fucking kitchen uh, freezer at like some restaurant yeah it was so cool man like I was that. in there for like 30 minutes I'm like this is not even cold I'm just breathing here and uh, yeah but that was a nice one like that's like it's subtle it's it gets it chills you but it doesn't freeze you I was, I've always been interested because my cold shock is usually like 5 to 15 minutes mm. and I'm in the shower and I'm trying to get my whole body wet I'm doing that rotisserie thing like I said last time <laughs> yeah. or I'm or in the pool you just give in you know, and you try to dunk your head repeatedly because then it like you kind of lose the feeling, mm. and then it's cold again, and like, uh, you know, do the breathing technique as needed, and et cetera, et cetera. But like, I'd love the like the idea that something is so cold that like you have to get out after two or three minutes, like it's it's like dangerous, and mm. like they give you mittens and Crocs so that you don't like hurt yourself because <laughs> you could like touch something and your skin will peel off. You know, like I wonder what Wim Hof would do in that. And fucking down some vodka and laugh. <laughs> He's like, I don't need these fucking mittens. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe fuck. 
But he's yeah. in shape too, man. I you was going to say he's, he's like a fucking once or yogi, twice a day bro. And he's, and he's he's a yogi, man. If you've seen his uh his practice, it's incredible. He has some he has a decent like his hips are very open. Uh his fucking you could tell by the shape of his belly that he has like like a good core activation yeah. and like hit, and like when he breathes, it's like it's like really deep and big like mm. it expands like his his diaphragm's not tight and he does like scorpions and stuff so he has like good upper body strength and yeah. shoulder mobility like i don't know how old he is he doesn't look super young but fuck he moves like a like a 30 year old 25 year old it's incredible man speaking of breathing and core m- and having a strong core and all that is another influencer you just popped up to me is fucking in the jiu-jitsu world hicks and gracie man i think a lot of people there's a documentary thing it's called fight or something i can't remember I would google love to. H- hicks and gracie documentary maybe just check it out um this guy he's like undefeated jiu-jitsu jiu-jitsu expert he's a little bit older now but he he was so intense in breathing and like he has these videos what was it called choke choke yeah choke fucking That's amazing name it's too bad though because there's a book and a, and a movie called Choke. Oh yeah, so it'll get okay. like lost in the. It's so good. You have you ever seen it? No, no, I'm yeah, glad. That's a really I good documentary, to. man. It was it was literally showing him preparing for a fight that was coming up in Japan. And oh, cool. He goes. He's that's in Japan. And he goes to like a waterfall. It's like freezing cold, and he just sits in lotus under the waterfall. And it's we're talking freezing temperatures. Yeah. And he's just doing this breathing where you see his belly like completely inverts, and you can see his intestines like, and he's just doing like these weird circles with his belly. I think the first time I saw him was doing that in like the the Ed Norton Hulk movie. Okay. He just like it was like this random celebrity cameo and like no one super knew who he was, but he was doing some crazy breathing techniques and the joke was that he's like showing Bruce Banner how to control his his body okay. through breathing techniques because he'll fucking hulk out. Wow, so that's that's relevant that's recent that that, that, that he got that recognition. Wow, cuz I think it I think it I'm sure a lot of people like this day and age you just see something cool at a movie and you go, "Who the fuck was that guy?" or "What was that technique?" or like, you know, like a lot of research goes into it now. Mm. You don't just think it's some like hand wavy fucking movie magic. Yeah. Especially because it's not CG. Like you just see the guy doing some cool stuff and then you see his face and you kind of recognize him too. You hear his voice. There's something, he's in the zeitgeist, you know, he's a, there's the fight world, UFC, everything's growing and it's, it's interesting. What was that football movie with Adam Sandler? 10 yards or, um, what the prison movie? Thing? Yeah. Yeah. I forgot the name of it, but, uh, Joey Diaz is in there. Not many people remember that. Yeah, he's in he's in a few movies and shit. That was an early on Joy Diaz. <laughs> that kind of went under the radar. That's so funny. But Hicks and Gracie, man, he's talking about the power of breathing and that he is in full control of his breath. So when he's fighting, he knows when he can get his opponent out of the breathing cycle. And then when you can disrupt their breathing cycle, they're mass massively weakened. Because he if you're with them at that level. Yes. And when they're doing jujitsu, it's like he will put you in positions where he he feels that your breathing is slowing down, or it's you're not having this repetitive breathing cycle where you're holding your breath and trying to get out of something, and he uses that against you. Mm. So how many times you hold your breath, it's no different than getting punched in the stomach in a jujitsu setting. Mm. So different positions, different pressures. You're holding your breath, you're tiring, and once you get tired, you're weak. The whole time he's just breathing in this constant repetitive state. That's amazing. Yeah, it's Choke is a fucking great documentary, man. Yeah, I'm going to watch that one. I'm going to rewatch sure. it too because it's been years. I'm telling you, man, it's A1. There's something, I, I still haven't fully accepted it, but I, that's what I love most about yoga is any of any any deep practice that, that engages breathing or, or use, utilizes breathing, it's like a steering wheel. It's like it's like all of us are trying to figure out how to steer our lives and we're like pushing this car and and it's like there's actually like an indirect way to more easily control the car and that's why I, I refer to the breath as a steering wheel. It's mm. like you have to step back and actually go through the breath. You can't just will yourself to feel better. Like sometimes you can. Sometimes a, a, a good friend or the right song or something just tells you to fucking like like just focus in, you know, like just mm. just... just it, don't think of that, you know, and then it's, it's, it doesn't work often, especially if you're in a really horrible mood, but yeah, sometimes it's all you need, but the, the breath, it like controls everything. It's insane. Hmm. And then these little variations on how you breathe are going to completely change your experience. And 
it's almost like our superpower. Like we're the aquatic ape. Like we're we're the monkey that thinks about breathing or or even unconsciously or, or genetically like just have this deeper control we have the mammalian dive reflex yeah we can we we go underwater and suddenly our heart rate slows down we oxygenate more efficiently somehow and and we we instinctively hold our breath it's like difficult like a baby can get thrown they actually do water births and the baby's fine i've seen videos of the this. baby is like still getting oxygen through the umbilical cord or some shit and they i've seen vid- I they saw videos instinctively don't breathe this this swim teacher like for babies we're talking like under a year <laughs> And he would like throw them in the pool, <laughs> and but the baby would like roll over on a bag naturally and just like float and yeah. cry and then float and then is normal and then he'd roll him back and just. <sighs> That's so. Funny. It was so interesting though, man. It's like fucking intense, but like so interesting that they they know how to maneuver through that. That's the obviously that's, don't. I just dropped aquatic ape. Yeah, don't throw babies. That's what yeah, you were gonna yeah. say. <laughs> don't throw babies. Just don't, in don't any test context. This. Yeah, don't even listen to me. Google it. Find your research. If you throw your baby in because of me, that's your fault. Yeah, plausible deniability. So, um, <laughs> what was I gonna say? You got a mean phone call in six months. <laughs> I threw my baby in the fucking water. <laughs> I hate piece this podcast. Of, piece of shit. <laughs> Uh, imagine they just turn the <laughs> podcast off and go, I'm going to throw my baby. You'd be surprised what kind of people are out there, man. I would not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to say something, though. I forgot. Oh, yeah. I just I just said aquatic ape, yeah. like, as if everyone knows what I'm talking about. In case you don't, like, there's a theory that why, like, why we're hairless monkeys is because we are, like, an offshoot. We evolved to be aquatic. We evolved to be like a hair like like we're hairless so we swim more easily we we can dry off more easily we can like irradiate like we can we can bring like our body our our skin somehow just like through this kind of weird osmosis like just mm. creates heat when when the water is on the skin and we evaporate the heat like the it, it takes energy but it's just a thing our skin does nice. our our hands get clammy for no reason other than to like grip more easily in the water mm. our the rest of our body doesn't do that just our hands and our feet it's why true, yeah? It's yeah. fucking awesome. And wow. there's there's a I think it's in like I forgot where, but there's there's this like uh I want to say like near Thailand. I can't remember right now, but there's these people that hunt fish and like since they were kids, they just go like spear fishing or something. I've seen that and uh, there's a BBC documentary on it. Yeah, or they, a clip. They they can they they essentially like squint underwater and they can see like they their eyes have evolved to like their lenses can bend or something or their yeah. I don't know if it's their cornea or the actual lens or something but they they can fucking see underwater like I can't see underwater I mean I can't see without my glasses anyway but have you seen that video it's like a 7 minute clip or a 5 minute clip and it's so they were vi- they were this fisherman some part of some tribe in like I think in Indonesia or something hmm. he went plunged 20 feet down with a spear onto oh the God. onto the floor of the ocean oh I did see that and recently he's running in slow motion yeah, yeah, and he's just holding his breath for like five yeah. minutes. Yeah, and I think they said it was, uh, for that video it was five, but it's been up to like seven, eight minutes that he can hold his breath. Yeah. And he just, in the water, just spears a fucking fish. Yeah, hand it. spear. Yeah, yeah. They, don't, they don't have the guns. And they just, just comes pfft. back up with the fish. Yeah. They're like, wow. You that's, know? That's your life, man. You, you gotta eat. <laughs> How adaptable the human can be. Yeah. In all conditions. That's intense. Jeez, fucking. Yeah, what's that guy's name? David Attenborough? Like the voiceover guy, he just made From everyone that video. F- probably no, yeah. but like I feel like I saw a lot of stuff like that in like the Planet Earths and all those yeah. cool. Like that became a popular thing for a while. Like I feel like Netflix didn't realize right away the potential, and then all this kind of like this documentary lovers made that worthwhile, and then mm. and now it just exploded, and now there's fucking like stupid document. There's even like dumb documentaries that are like, what? Why is this a document? Why does this exist? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like, nothing beats like more. planet earth and stuff like that those kind of hour long videos are just like animals in their habitat it's so cool too just to see other like the, one of them was called humans i think or something like that or human earth and it was just like the the same thing but just how different people lived in different parts of the world wow. and it was fascinating to think that we're the same thing like we have such a closed specific culture and everyone else feels that way even if you're some weird fucking mongolian a falcon breeder and you're riding a yak and you're fucking like bow and arrowing your fucking breakfast like you're you have this vast 
Freddy empty. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just making shit <laughs> I up. I just pictured the scariest <laughs> fucking human alive. I'm sure they're very nice people, though. I'm sure they're, they're very humble, and they have they have a certain lifestyle yeah. that demands a certain kind of tribal like gratitude and and empathy and all that. But anyway, I'm 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 not here to defend Mongols. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> never thought I'd say that. <laughs> My point is like we're all in a bubble. It's just how yeah. humans work. There was this line from a Community. I love that show. Dan Harmon is another influencer. I'll throw his name out there. I love him. I love all his writing. He's a genius. He's a good guy too. He's interesting. But he, but the Pierce, the character uh, for uh, in the show, I don't know if you're familiar with Community. It doesn't matter. But this guy is like going (coughs) deaf in the show, and he explains how like humans are not meant to hear further out because he buys this like weird thing called earnoculars so that he can hear really far. It's it's a funny show, and he says like he's like he says something really profound. He says like you're supposed to just hear. He's like. The, the people around you are the loved ones. They're the ones that you're supposed to be listening to. Hmm. He just had this weird like epiphany, like humans are not meant to hear <laughs> nice. so yeah. far away. But he actually said something really profound, you know. And it, like we're just innately in a bubble, <laughs> yeah. And it's like it's what human is, and that's part of why we're freaking out all the time is because I just have this weird rectangle of glass in my pocket that is essentially a anxiety manufacturing, like a factory yeah. of of fear and of all the above even if it's not directly fear there's an overload of information and like i feel like one of my maxims in life lately i'm trying to develop it is the body and the mind are a temple Mm. i i have to be careful what i consume both on on multiple levels and well both physically but also what you're putting in your body and what you're putting in your mind yeah the body mind connection is a huge topic in in yoga circles because it's like you're trying to almost you have to talk about it, obviously, as separate things often, hmm. but they're not. They're just not. And that's why through the body, through the breath, you can manipulate. Well, they're, and They're deeply connected and, and influenced by each other, right? You can't really separate yeah. them. And there's, there's, yeah, there's biofeedback loops. You know, that's why mudras work, I think. You know, like someone says, like, uh, uh, smile and you'll feel better yeah. because you feel, you smile when you feel good. So smile and you'll feel good. Yeah. That's how the, that's so cool. And so then like the, you have these anxieties, these way that you might like interpret the, your emotions through your hands, mm-hmm. through your whole body. Yeah. And then why not do those things? And then suddenly that affects your body. It comes mm-hmm. back to you. It's a loop. It's, it's biofeedback. It's yeah. something, I don't know. It's, that's not necess- That's not technically like the term biofeedback is like you being plugged up to a machine yeah. and like being able to see what you're producing so you can manipulate it so it's like not really the right term but who cares Fuck i'm not it. a fucking dictionary google it google it motherfuckers fuck on my face i ain't oh. a professional we're just here to be honest and awesome and show you some cool stuff yeah. stop putting the screws to me nate just like that we, did, <laughs> we just did an hour and a half buddy it's done it's done man oh dude we didn't talk about anybody we wanted to talk about <laughs> it's always like that oh that's funny but uh terrence mckenna google that bitch <laughs>